Hello, I'm Pastor Brian, and I want to thank you so much for joining me as we look into God's Word to see His timeless truth. If we look at the world around us, we see that there is an attack on unity. We see that it is much easier to destroy things than it is to build things up. We can just imagine, think about marriage and relationships. We spend years working on them, cultivating them, building them. And in one day, we could completely ruin them. We see buildings where it takes forever to build, but then we can also see that they can be brought down within minutes. Um, and we just can see all these things around us where, yes, it takes time and energy to build unity. Well, which is an interesting thing when it comes to the church, because we've been looking in the first part of Ephesians where he has taken two opposing groups, which seemingly opposing, Jews and Gentiles, and he did this amazing thing. He made one new man, and with that one new man, he has a desire to reach the world with the gospel. And so, through believers, we are called to live together in unity and to build one another up and to go forth. And so, just as Paul has gotten finished talking about the deep theological truths that are in Scripture, he wants us to go ahead and to see what does it look like to live with un in unity with other believers. Now, keep it in mind, he's initially addressing these Jews and Gentiles worlds apart. They, they, they ate differently. They did all these things, practices, and ways in which they uh, were brought up very different. And yet, he says, all right, I have broken down that dividing wall, and I desire to show, to demonstrate in Scripture that we are to walk in unity and what that looks like based upon what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer as we seek his guidance, his direction in all of this. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the, the call that you have put on each and every one of our lives to glorify you, to work together, to exalt you, to glorify you. Lord, I pray that you would give me the words to say and those that are listening, that you'd give them ears to hear the fabulous truth that is in your word. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. So, open up your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4. This is essentially a, a, a new kind of division within the book, but it, I think it's more likely to view it as, as a natural outflowing of the deep, solid theological truths that Paul has presented. And we see this truth as how it should impact our lives. See, not only do we get into the Word to study it, but it also shapes our lives. And we can't really live this out without the Holy Spirit within us allowing us to do that. So, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. And it starts off just connecting what he has talked about with the I therefore. So, all that I have talked about in chapters 1, 2, and 3, let me go ahead and build upon how you are to, to live that out. And, and he's going to talk about the topic of unity, which is, a, is something that really you spend a lot of time and energy in doing because really, and it doesn't mean uniformity, it doesn't mean that everybody thinks alike but that we are united in Christ as believers of what Christ has done and how we are to live out our lives for the glory of God. And it says, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord. So he's going back and so, and he's changing instead of a prisoner of Christ, a prisoner of the Lord. He, he is showing, he is um, living out this life not as a prisoner in Rome, but as one that is bound by what God calls him to do. He sees it. And it's not a unwillingness, but it's a willingness, but knowing there are restraints uh, of what he is called to do. And with the restraints, he is going to expound upon this unity that each and every one of us is called. And so, how do we live this out? He says, I urge you, so this is, an, this is a nice suggestion, 
but this is an urging. I have this, and it's important as you as believers in Jesus Christ of how you are to live. How are you to live out these solid biblical truths that I've just talked to you about? So I urge you, it's that strong push, um, really, I mean, to, to walk, and, and that and we see that this command to walk, to carry out, to move forward in this way, uh, to walk in a manner worthy. So walk in a way in, in which you are worthy, that, that it reflects who you are in Christ, uh, worthy of the call to which you have been called. So we uh, we think about different people being called to minister as far as being called to minister but each and one of every one of us if we're a believer not only as we talked about earlier in the book are we called to follow after him and that's God's doing but we're also called to live out this life of unity within the church the sad thing is you could all probably point to a a church split to arguments within the church christians that don't talk to one another anymore and this is just an unfathomable thing i remember coming across two individuals their brother and sister and they didn't talk to one another anymore because of a conflict that they had and in that conflict that they had, it just was mind-blowing knowing that both of them were believers, that they couldn't work out whatever issue it was between them, that they couldn't live in obedience to God's word because that's the call each and every one of us as believers has. And this is a call that we are to given not only as we are believers, but as a part of the church, that God, his special presence resides within not only the church, but within us, that we are to live out the way in which we are to move forward. And this is what he says, with all humility and gentleness. Now, you can imagine how hard it is to have unity, which is what he's talking about, if there is pride involved. I can't tell you how pride just infects us in so many ways, in so many areas with relationships. Think about how pride in your own life about you and in the things that you think are important has ruined relationships. And so he's saying, all right, I want you to walk in humility. I want you to have a proper understanding of not this false humility that is often demonstrated, but a reality of who you are in Christ and what Christ has done. When it talks about humility, that's what it's talking about. A proper understanding of what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross and knowing that you are not a believer, you are not a part of the church in and of yourselves, but it is a work of God that he has done. And we can't boast about it. So humility and gentleness, or some translations might say meekness. This doesn't mean weakness. This means uh, with great self-control. So it, maybe you have a, a disagreement or an argument with somebody. Are you restrained? Do you, can you still disagree and show the love of Christ. That doesn't mean that you don't stick up for what is right, what is true, but you do it in such a way that you're you're still honoring that individual. You are not being heavy-handed and domineering, but you are with resolve to treat this individual as one who Christ, the way in which Christ would treat them, with great love, but also with firmness. So, and you're being gentle with that, uh, gentleness and with patience. So, you're long-suffering. You're able to deal with them in, in, in a way where it's not like, it's got to be done. It's got to be done now, 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 now. But you understand, just as when you first came to know the Lord, 
You were probably rough around the edges. And God and his patience continue to draw you closer to himself as you walk with him, as you progress in your relationship with the Lord. The Lord isn't like, oh, you know what? You didn't do what you were supposed to do. I'm, I'm going to smite you. I'm, I'm never going to have anything to do with you. No, that's not the characteristic of the Lord. It is being patient. And we can see throughout the Old Testament how God is very patient with the Israelites. And it says, bearing with one another in love. So dealing with one another in, in this love, this love that God has for us, that we deal with it wanting the other person's best. And that ultimately is done without selfishness, without pride, but we really seek to honor the other person. So we're, we're, not, we're, we're being patient, we're, we're dealing with them, and this is really impossible to do if we're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, if we're not relying upon God. Because it, when pride pops up in our way, we want it our way, we want it our way right now, and we want it right here. And that's a lot of times what we see going on in the world around us. But that's not how God calls us to operate, especially within the church, where unity is just something that is so important to, to work on, to cultivate, to create, and, and to maintain. So it's eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So you see, it's this unity that we have, that we're united together, being built upon Christ. And this is a unity that exists so, because we're maintaining it. And not only are we maintaining it, we so, or, or we're, he urges us because we need to be eager to maintain that. Now, that's a question where each and every one of us has to ask ourselves, are we eagerly wanting to maintain unity within the church? I think the church over this past, whatever it's been, a year, year and a half, a little over that, and just the whole idea um, with masks and, and lockdowns and different ways to do things within the church and how people understand different things that are going on culturally and how to live that and work that out. I, I think that that's easy to think about how it has essentially destroyed churches and, and the churches are supposed to be that of, yes, we have different viewpoints here and there, but the unity that we have in Christ is central and foremost. And because we have unity in Christ, we need to love each other and be patient with one another. It's not like we say our patience is wearing thin. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. That's not the Christian response. The Christian response is let us be united in the spirit and work together because we know this peace, this unity that we have, this not, this not str striving against one another, that that is not what God has called us to, but that we're striving for unity. And does that mean that you're going to be hurt? Your feelings are going to be hurt at times. That it's going to be difficult at times. Absolutely. But the call that we have in Christ is to not live in and of ourselves, but to live within, within community, to live in unity. And that takes work. That takes time. And it's easy to, and you just look around and it's, it's easy to say, hey, I, I just don't want to be around those sinners in church. I, I want to live life out of church has hurt me. It's easy to do that and to, and to say, I'm okay doing that. But that's not what scripture calls us to do. Scripture calls us to walk in unity with one another. To, to, to work differences out. To understand our, our, our center of who we are. Our, our, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us is the same Holy Spirit that dwells within that other believer. That in that there is great unity. And then... So that creates a bond, that, that tightness. That tightness is, is that peace that we were talking about. That there is that absence of strife and tension. There is one body and one spirit. And that's what we're talking about. The body of Christ, the church. The church that Christ has created from the two, from Jew and Gentile, he's created one. And we're united in the spirit, the Holy Spirit, because we are called to follow after him. So this union that we have 
with God, we also have a union with other believers being knit together that we're essentially woven together that we're supposed to uh, walk to, so to progress in our relationship with the Lord in unity with other believers, encouraging one another, acting out in love and gentleness, and we can't be pride. And he talks about that in one body and one spirit. Just, and this is kind of a, a kind of an explanation. Just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, so that one hope is that Christ is returning. Now, lots of people will disagree on how that exactly is going to, but we all agree as believers. There, there will be a day when Christ returns and he will take those that are his and we will be with him. We will be united with him. And that's the hope that we have, that it's not over and done with, but there's still an unfolding of the future of what is to happen. And in that, God has a plan through the church as the Holy Spirit works within us. And, and as that we have this call. You belongs to to your call. So our calling as a church is to live together with this unity, and it's based upon all of this. As we see this unity, the, these stepping stones, as we see, is of, of these that are essential. One Lord, and this one Lord refers to Jesus Christ, as we see in this passage, uh, and like in many other passages, it refers to uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, one God and three distinct persons. But here we see that because it's talking about uh, the Holy Spirit here, and, the, and then later on, uh, the, the God the Father, this one Lord is Jesus Christ. So we're united in Jesus Christ and what He's done in His work. <clears throat> one faith. One faith, that which we have come to know Jesus, we have trusted in him, we are united in faith. And one baptism. I think this one baptism refers to being not only baptized in the Holy Spirit in the sense united together in him with that, but also the sense of being baptized, the water baptism, and that is the identification that we have of that we are not our own, but we are belong to Christ, so that we have died to self, that we're united uh, to God. And that happens when we're baptized in the Spirit. We, we have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, that the outward sign of that is also that, or, or the way in which that is lived out, is by water baptism. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't been baptized um Please come see me. Talk to me. Uh, it's an important thing to be baptized. And that's a, com a command that God has for each and every one of us if you've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. So this one baptism is being united together in the body of Christ, uh, being united through the Holy Spirit. But the outward sign of that is saying, yes, I identify to that, which is seen in water baptism. One God and Father of all. So there, the understanding that even though we talk about the three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, there is one God and in that God the Father who has orchestrated all of this to happen, has been around for all creation just as Jesus Christ and, and, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and he is ultimately over all over all the heavenly beings, over all that are here on earth, over everything. He is over all. So he's father of all. So he, he is in charge. He is the one who we worship, um, who is over all and through all and in all. It, 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 he makes it very clear that he is supreme. He is holy. He is over all. And the call to unity that we have is directly related to who we are in Christ and what he has done. And him being overall, he's the one who gets to call shots. He's the one who has given the word of God. He is the one who is eternal. Uh, there's never been a time when God hasn't been. And there will never be a time when God isn't. And he has given us his holy word that we would follow after him, that we would live for him. And in all of that, that this calling of unity to be within the church is really central to the call that God has for you. Call as we think about calling as a believer. And that 
We aren't free to just do whatever we want. We're not free to say, all right, I don't care to live in unity with the church. I choose to be in disunity. And I think a lot of people don't weigh that out. I think what happens is people become come part of a church and there's maybe one or two things that they don't like. And again, I'm not talking about those things that are doctrinally just just important, like, uh, you know, uh, as far as the resurrection of Christ, the the inerrancy of God's word, or, or anything like that, I'm talking about just uh, strife over 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 other things, and and then in that somebody chooses to go to leave to go away, and there's not that call that if I'm going to go away, there's got to be a solid biblical reason why I'm going away, uh, and, and and seeing that 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 there is a call in Scripture to be united, and it's hard when you're in a church. When this isn't valued, but you can't go around pointing, hey, you're not acting unifying, you're not acting unifying. The call is to each and every one of us and us as a whole that I need to do what God has called me to do, to act in a way that is unifying, that builds up the body of Christ because of who we are in him and what he has done. And this call to live in unity for the spread of the gospel because we know the work that Jesus Christ has done to reconcile us to himself. And in fact, taken many people from all over the world and say, you know what, this is the church, body, people who have trusted in me, who live out life following after me. This is the body of believers that I have called to follow after me. And that's what each and every one of us need to say. So, as he calls us to walk in, in a manner, he, what, is, what is he referring to? He's, gonna, he's referring to this uh, matter of unity. Now, are you doing things to create unity within the church? Are, are, and it starts with this whole concept of being humble and loving one another. Those things are so important. And I think what happens is people put their agendas or their, their top priorities in front of everything and they miss out on God's priority, his top calling, his call for, uh, in which he calls us to live. Now, yes, there can be disagreement, but that doesn't mean that, that you know, we don't work through them. Yeah, we work through them and there can be disagreements, but we can be united in Christ and the call that we have to walk in this way so that, as it talks about in scriptures, that our, that our unity is used to show unbelievers of what the church is and the importance of who God is and it glorifies God. So this is a call each and every one of us. So I think probably it's a time of, reflecting upon how do we act in a way that can bring unity to the body of believers. And if we've done things which have created disharmony, uh, if prides come in, if we, we have issues with people in the church that are unresolved, how can we resolve those? How can we have unity within the church if individuals are striving against one another? That, that doesn't work. And the call as a prisoner of Jesus Christ is to walk in unity. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. And let's ask God to work within our hearts to bring about that unity, that we would be eager to work on that. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray for those that are listening to this. Maybe that they have strife with a church. Maybe they haven't been to church for years because they, they have an issue with somebody at church. Lord, I, I pray that because as believers we're called to live in unity, that there's a greater call that we would be humble, that we would uh, put energy and effort into creating unity within the church as that is your desire, Lord. Work within our hearts. Help us to foster that. Help us not to tear things down. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions, reach out to me and be blessed.